Welcome, and thank you for joining for another Whiskey Review. Today, we're going to take a look at the 2022 Lafroy Karchus. Uh, this time, the Warehouse One. Dustin, so uh, this particular one comes in at 52.2% ABV. And uh, what makes this uh, particular year's Karchus special is it was aged in all, what, First Fill Maker's Mark barrels? First Fill Maker's Mark. Th- thumbs up. On the disclosure. Yeah, like, yeah. First fill, Maker's Mark barrels, kind of pulling a almost Octomore where it tells you where they yeah, usually they exactly. got it. Um, and this was also aged in Warehouse One. So they call it Warehouse One, which, if you're not a big fan of Lafroig, um, that is the warehouse that is closest to the water, I believe. Yeah, so it's supposed to give off more salt and brine. Now, you know one thing, Mike, that that bottle I haven't seen, I can't find it on there. What's that, buddy? It doesn't say cast strength. Yeah, so I was looking at the same thing. Every once in a while, it doesn't say cast strength yeah. with the Karchus. Uh, with the Fino, it didn't say cast strength, even though it was in the 50s. So yeah, Low 50s, this one. Also, also low, low 50s. 50s. So I would say it's not cast strength, but um, you know, still, that's a strong offer in 52%. No, no complaints there. Yeah, not at all. But yeah, that, that is a, a good pickup, Dustin. It did not say cast strength, which also the Fino did not. So with the rest of the disclosure and the rest of the time them saying that, that means it's not. <laughs> it seems reasonable to me. It seems like a reasonable guess. I'd, put, I'd bet the house on it. All right. So, I mean, obviously recognizable as Lafroy. <laughs> that lemon menthol uh, iodine thing is mm-hmm. instantly... Uh, can't even, like, try to hide from this thing. No. Comes off very similar to the 10. Cash very, strength. very similar to the 10. When we poured a 10 cast strength, we'll, at the end, compare we'll just We'll talk about that here, yeah. Mm. But you know what? There is an element that reminds me of the 21 from 2015. Really? Okay, I'm going to have to look for it. From the 2015 21-year-old that was 21 years of Friends of Lafroy, okay? And that was all first fill, very special bourbon casks. Maybe my favorite Lafroy of all time, and that includes the 32. Correct. The, the 32 might be Now, this isn't obviously close to the age or anything else like that, but... Something about first fill bourbon tames the overly iodine note to Lafroy, which I love. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, I love it. But it tames that note and replaces it with a nice oaky vanilla mm-hmm. that you often don't get with this distillery. Now, you fell in love with Lafroy for a reason, but this is a nice take on it. And I'm like, Driving up here today, first th- time it's ever happened in my current car, I had rubber from a tire hit me, and then I had it hit me again, and you know what I smell on this thing is burnt rubber. <laughs> it just made me rem- reminded me of that story uh, driving up here. Well, the will do that too. This is the most burnt tire though I've really gotten before. Like it's very distinct. Mm. I almost can't get past it. Hmm. I'm picking up just that sweet vanilla. There is definitely a sweet vanilla. And then there's that just kind of classic Lafroy line. <clears throat> Lafroy smoke is here, but not none of the high, none of the medicinal. Some medicinal, but it's it's really muted. It's lower point. on the medicinal notes. You're right. But you know, I, I feel like Lafroy has kind of um, been kind of dialing that medicinal note back, unless they use a sherry cask a bit lately. Possibly. I don't know, man. This feels cleaned up. This feels, feels like a cleaned up. Yep. <clears throat> well, slightly, maybe, maybe, maybe even slightly older than 10 years old. Or maybe the cast did that much mm-hmm. justice to it. It's almost like Lefroy shaved off its beard and put on a suit just for a wedding or something. <laughs> At least on the nose. What do you pick it up on the palate? Yeah. Um, so I, I do kind of want to re- read out what you kind of said here. I didn't get it as much on the nose, but on the palate. First fill bourbon really does clean up Lafroy. It adds more of the sweetness, more of the caramel, and it, essentially it adds more cask influence faster. Mm-hmm. Now, my guess is 6 to 15-year-old whiskey, probably maybe 15 is a little too much. But anyway, my guess is they use a little bit of young, a little bit old, but yeah, um... I think that vanilla note that's coming through here, beautiful. 
That's it, man. I'm getting just classic Lafroig beyond that. It is a little more a little more sweet, a little more vanilla. And then I think on the back end, I do think there is a it could be power of suggestion, but I do think there's a little bit more smokiness. And it's actually a fairly clean smoke. So maybe it is more brine and less smoke, and I'm just not able to discern that. But it's a overall very clean Lafroig. There is definitely something on the finish that's a little bit more punchy, but up front, very clean vanilla. Kind of um, a neutral, simple, but refined Lafroig. So, <clears throat> initially on the palate, a big wall of vanilla. You're getting Lafroig smoke with none of the, almost, almost none of the medicinal notes. But the beautiful thing about this is as soon as you swallow, you get a type of smoke that I rarely get with Lafroig unless it's old and with sherry cast, which is weird because this is neither of those things. And that is tobacco smoke. Initially on the finish. Mm. So, again, for me, it take, it very much cleans up Lafroig. That is absolutely how I would describe this whiskey. From the nose to the palate to the finish. When I, when I mean by cleans up, it takes away medicinal, puts in vanilla. Mm-hmm. Puts in uh, maybe 10% oak, and it really kind of sachets it into the smoke in a very Ardbeg, Lagavulin and traditional way. Not where the whole thing is just... But best way I can describe it is before the whole thing is like Thanksgiving where you have mashed potatoes and you put your corn and you put your chicken and everything in the mashed potatoes and you mix it up and you get everything in one bite. Now it's portioned out to you. And it's portioned out... In a, in, a, in a relatively simple way. Mm-hmm. Again, vanilla, oak, then the smoke. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's a lot more paste than the frig normally is. This is not the 10. This is not even the 18. Those are beasts of a whiskey. This is shockingly a more refined whiskey from just doing it with the bourbon cast that treated it gentle. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm going to say, you said 6 to 15. I agree. I don't think it's as old as 15. But I think it's more like about a 12-year-old whiskey. At least it comes off that way, or the cast make a young whiskey feel like a 12-year-old. I think whiskey. first fill bourbon comes off older, in general. When you Maybe. Talk, when, you, when you're in that narrow range. Could very well be the case. But again, at the end, when you swallow, it, it, when you get that little tobacco down on the finish, that's something I rarely get from Lafroix, mm-hmm. and almost never, well, not almost never, never get them from young Lafroix. And the only Lafroix that was a bourbon cask I got it from was the 21. So never from young Lafroigs, and only in one other instance was a only Bourbon Castle Lafroig that I get that note from. So, well done. Like water, same nose. Yeah, you? same nose. It, it's it, it's simple in its delivery. It's just yeah. what I like. It's good. Definitely has that lime note that I get consistently. Iodine and nice wood smoke to mm-hmm. me. Just, mm-hmm. just classic again. It didn't it didn't shift much at all. We poured ourselves a small little dram of the 10 cast strength, the batch 12. Not a particularly interesting batch or anything special, but we just kind of want to bring it yeah. at the end just to kind of compare. It, it is, I guess, a little famous because it hit 60% exact, so 60.1%, just whatever. <clears throat> okay, yeah. I guess we're going to lose that before. All right, so just compared to something that is another high ABV. Because well, I think what blessing. you're going to wonder, I think, is, guys, do I rush out and try to get these... In some markets, these are super hard to get. In some markets, they're not. Mm-hmm. These are a little easier in some markets. I know this is getting hard to get in some places, too. So, we'll say instantly on the nose, far harsher. Harsher. Sweeter and easier to nose. Harsher whiskey. <sighs> Cleaner, nicer. Almost doesn't make me even think of a peated whiskey. Mm-hmm. Oh man, no. I completely disagree, Mike. This is super easy nosing. I was talking comparatively. Iron poop. Okay. Kind of same thing on the palate. It's a little more stinging. I mean, it has a little bit higher of an ABV, so you would expect that. A little bit less of vanilla note. What I would expect out of the Freud 10 or the Freud 10 cast strength. Yeah, definitely stings more. But I mean, again, I'm going to bring the water down because, I mean, we're talking. 52 versus 60 here. So. Fair, fair point. So I will do that, but on the nose for me, actually, man, I, I like the sweetness here. This has got a little more going on with it, though. 
Uh, yeah. It's a little simpler. Yeah, we disagree on this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I... Well, no, we disagree on this. Okay. Hey, fair enough. So you think this has got as much going on or more than this? You said this is more stinging. Yeah, well, I mean, neither one of them are super complex. I mean, that's... I mean, it, for, from a standpoint. I mean, this has two or three things going on, you know, that, that I prefer better with the vanilla, with the oak. This one is traditional Lafroig, Very basic. I get nothing going on in this whiskey. I just right, get, I just get sweetness with a little bit of smoke. That's it. Very basic. Whereas this, I actually get like the transition from like medicinal to lemon. I, this has got okay. some ways. So, yeah. So 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 if you're, if you're gonna pressure me on the issue, yes, I would say this is a more complex whiskey. I wouldn't say either one are complex. It's just candy cigarettes, man. Just sweet, easy. I have as much sweetness as you do. Okay. Let me let me, let me do a little. This is way sweeter. This has got way more like bitterness. This is more vanilla, but okay, I could see how you would say this is the the, the ten catch rings is more sweet. But the I, okay, yeah, so sweet, yes. Um, clean, this is more sickly distinct, sweet. This is more distinct vanilla, yes. Correct. But this is like that's just sweeter. This is like this is like two notes to me. Like it's sweet up front, and then it's with like the little bit of lime, and then it's got the smoke. This is just right. So, sweet, sweet with smoke, like all kind of together. So yeah, mind you, this is uh, disclosure. It's the end of the bottle. Yeah. So you so you have so you have an idea of kind of what you think compared to a ten cash drink. So going back to just the warehouse one itself, let's get to what you think of whiskey scores. Oh, the water definitely helped the yeah, ten. Um, eighty six. I was gonna say eighty seven. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Really good whiskey. Mm-hmm. Eighty five is kind of my like. Average quality whiskey that I want to have in my bar. 86. One little step up from that. I think that's exactly what this is. <clears throat> it's good quality whiskey at 100 bucks. Definitely a buy. Agreed. About 120 is the high end I'm seeing for us in the States. I think, you know, at that point, um, you're getting... You're not getting any value, but it's probably worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not a super old Lafroy for sure. It's a younger Lafroy. I think maybe it's 12 years old. And, but that's probably the high end of what I think it could possibly be. I like the like the cash they use in it. I like what they do with the whiskey. This is a bottle that I'd buy one or two of. One to keep long term because I like all the cartridges. Mm-hmm. I like keep on cartridges and maybe one to drink. And then let's move on with life because this is an average 86, 87 whiskey. Now, if you can't get this because it's hard to get mm-hmm. and you have to go secondary or you're in a country where it's real hard to get, the prices are high, would you pay double this over the 10? It would depend. Ten cast strength? Yes, ten no. cast strength. No. Because I think some people are in that boat. That's kind of why I wanted to bring up the ten cast strength. If, if they're even, grab this because it's unique and you get the ten cast strength anytime. Well, every batch is a little different, but yeah, I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. For the most part. Well, they're not like they're making epic batches now. I didn't like I didn't think eleven, twelve, thirteen, or fourteen were anything special as far as the four ten cast strength. I haven't had the fourteen or the thirteen yet, so But my point is this one won't be around forever. This, I mean, I'm sure it's a sizable release, but it's fun to have a bottle or yeah, two. Yeah. I, I like, to me, there were parts of this whiskey that reminded me of the 21 from back in 2015. Now, it was just a little piece here and a little piece there, but it was still there. Yeah. Again, I really enjoy this one. I, mm-hmm. I agree. I would I would pay a premium. It's not amazing, Lefroy. I'd pay a premium for this one. At the same time, I'm, I... I, I I hesitate because it's not cast drink. Mm-hmm. The 10's cast drink. Mm-hmm. I think in a way you're getting a better value of your whiskey, but this is more unique. So that's kind of where I'm at is I'd, buy I'd probably pay an extra 10 bucks for this one. <clears throat> it's about it as a drinker. Yep. As a kind of a geek who wants to collect and have one of everything, I'd probably pay more for this. Those are our thoughts on the whiskey. Yeah. If you guys had a chance to try this one, let us know what you think. Dustin, until next time, we'll happy PD drinking. There you go.